Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. Ah, yeah, you know what it is. Hard worker, scrappy, unfiltered, and sometimes unhinged football content. Hard to explain, but you know it when you see it. Doing it daily our way. I don't know what you're talking about right now. Redraft and Dynasty Fantasy Football, we got you covered. You know their defense is ranked like 31st in the NFL? NFL draft prospects and rookies? Now you know you in the right place for that. Absolutely. All right, then stop saying it. Then we're done. And prop bets with my man Jay Rich. Count that money, man. Now wipe the crust out of your eyes. Get you a cup of coffee. It's time to wake your ass up with Ray G. You honestly are making absolutely no sense and you sound silly as hell. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good people. It is Monday, April the 18th, 2022, and y'all decided to wake y'all ass up with Ray G. We in the building, baby. Um... Yeah, everybody is here. I uh, hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Uh, some of y'all may be off today. If you had a Friday off, I hope you enjoyed it. You're relaxed and you're ready for the home stretch of what should be a uh, lied filled process throughout the process. Smoke screen, lies, hot takes, bullshit flowing left and right. The NFL draft is next week. We are here. Uh, Dalton, what's up, baby? Good morning. Rojo Fish, James, Jordan Backus, the head of analytics over at Destination Debbie. Shout out my guy. Brandon in the building. Marlon, Shane, Joe, myself. I made a comment. I'm in the building. Johnny, Zach, Marlon, Loud, Mick. We got a lot of people in the building. Where's, where's my girl Joe? Joe's in the building. Roro, good to see y'all, man. Where's Mike A? Cody Carpentier in the building. How the hell? What are we... What are we doing? Cody's supposed to be in the show. Uh, he's in the comments. My girl, Lindsey Mack in the building. Heath, haven't seen this name before. Uh, excited. Thank y'all for tapping into the show. If this is your first time here, we are all about the algorithm. Uh, uh, comment, like, subscribe, all that good shit so more people can see the show and come partake in the goodness that we have. But we've, we've got, a, um, got a lot to get to, and I don't want to delay We've got the man of the hour, the head of football over at Roto Underworld, player profiler. We both started uh, a podcast around uh, the same time with one Matt Kelly, but uh, y'all know who it is, man. Let's not even delay. Cody Carpentier in the building, baby. What's up, big dog? The biggest of big dogs. Cody, what's up, baby? (laughs) What's up, my man? I appreciate you having me on. As always, you know, I stay in the comments. Uh, You're just rubbing. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> really getting up this morning, but we here, we up, and, and we're here to talk some ball. So, yeah, hope yeah. you're doing well. Doing well, and as always, joined by my man, the partner in crime, Jay Rich. What's up, Jay? What's good, man? What's good, ha- Cody? Happy to have you here, man. You know, you're always in the comments, but pre-show, we saw you. You're still rubbing the yeah, eyes, still rubbing drinking the coffee, eyes, looking a lot like eyes. me. It's a different experience, but we're happy to have you, man. Happy to talk the mock today. It's it's a whole new game when when you're the one sitting here at eight o'clock in the morning on the stream. <laughs> I think the earliest that I think the earliest I've ever done streams is like nine thirty maybe, but eight mm. o'clock east east time. I know you guys are seven o'clock, so it's like I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know how you do it. Yeah, we had to, we 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 get it in early. Um, I gotta put the uh, I got something special for you, man. We gotta make you uh we gotta make you official over here, Cody. Let's there it is, there it is. Ooh. Let's make them official. There it is. Shout out to our partners, Prize Picks. Use the promo code Wake Up for a hundred percent deposit match, dollar for dollar, up to a hundred for first time depositors. Make sure you use that. Um, but without further ado, uh, somebody said Cody and Jay Rich got the same barber. There we go. There we yes, go. Sir. Yes. Yeah, they got the same kind of do going on. But um, uh, check it out, check it out. So NFL draft is 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 next week, and Cody, you recently released a mock draft. I believe this is what is this three point oh for you, six point oh mock draft six point oh for you. Um, he's got some trades inside the mock. So what what I continue to talk about and tell people is at this stage of the process, like I want to consume as much mock draft information as possible because yeah. it sort of prepares me for whatever, right? Like if. If Kenny Pickett goes six or if he goes 20, if if Spiller goes in the second round or the fourth round, like I want to do as many of these as possible. That way when rookie drafts roll around, I've sort of seen a little bit of everything. And I know you are – I call you the mock draft takedown king because you like to um you like to mock some mocks. You like to talk about some of these big these big wigs that throw a lot of stuff out there. And uh, you know you're one of the football minds that I really respect. The work that you do uh, with Player Profiler, you know the Futurecast podcast. You and Andy, we were on the other day. Uh, just wanted to get your thoughts and insights on some of these players. So everybody in the comments, keep them coming. Me and Jay will be monitoring it. But Cody, um, this is all about you, big dog. So let's um without further ado. 
let's get into it. And this is our Jay, this is our first wake up guest, right? Like I think yes, we sir. had first I think guest. back back in the fall we had cool. Elliot Christ on for a little bit, but this is the first uh this is the first guest we've had here in 2022. So glad it's Cody. Let's uh let's get it popping with him. Boom. And let's take a look at his mock. So Cody, this is um just talk us through this. So how many rounds is this mock? Is this just a, a one round mock? No, this is so this is gonna be a three round mock here. Uh, four and five will come out tonight, and then six and seven will come out on Tuesday. I'm um, releasing them in batches. You know how it is with the algorithm stuff. I'm just trying to, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yeah, not gonna, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah, I'm not gonna drop all seven all. on no, you. You you know you don't do that. You don't do that, Cody. You got to stretch the content, man. No, nobody's got nobody's got time to sit down and read through a whole seven round mock. So you get get them three rounds now. They come back for four and five, and come back for six and seven. You know what it is. But anyway, so we got the first three rounds here. Like you said, the trades. I'll just go through those really quickly. A lot of people don't like trades in their mocks, but it's mm -hmm. realistic. We see trades every single year. Um, so if there's something that I feel makes sense, something that's been talked about quite often, I'm gonna drop it in there. Um, the Eagles. I think obviously they move down. Uh, to 2023 with one of those picks. I think there's a good chance they move up if there's somebody that they want there. Uh, had the Eagles moving up from 15 to 6, uh, getting Sauce Gardner. And then later on in the first, uh, Atlanta trades up from 43 to 30 with the Chiefs, who also have two picks. And All right. Moving around one to get. So well, that's well, kind of where I'm at with that. Let's dive right into it because what we've been seeing a lot of us in the fantasy, it's interesting because a lot of us in the fantasy space have been mocking Malik Willis to two uh, to yeah. Detroit, but you did not do that. And right here you have him selecting, selecting um, I, I, one of my favorite offensive linemen in this class, Icky Ekwanu from uh, uh, North Carolina State at two. Just real quick, uh, tell us the thought process here of not going with Malik Willis, who seems to be uh, the consensus, at least fantasy favorite, to go number two to Detroit. That's where that's where I kind of defer. I, I don't think that they want I don't think that they hate Malik. I just don't think that that's something that they want to do and how they want to build their franchise. Um, while I was working on this, I tweeted it out. I put uh, when you want to you want to run the ball and you want to protect your quarterback so he never gets touched. You get Frank Reg now at center. You put Akeem at guard and you put Penny Sewell at tackle and you just dominate. And people I, it got a pretty good pop. And I was like. I don't feel like it's a very controversial thing, but some people didn't like it. Um, I think you want to build your team inside out. You go Akeem Aquanu right here. Um, I don't think it should be an under-discussed thing. Malik Willis, obviously I love the talent. I've talked to you about that. Uh, Mach 5 I had Seattle trading up and taking Malik in this spot. So um, I don't. I think it's still on the table that he goes to because of Detroit, because of Seattle, but I think Akeem Aquanu is the answer here. All right. Well, we're going to we want to hit the fantasy relevant guys. So I'll run through this. You've got Houston taking Evan Neal at three, which I think is fantastic. If Houston's able to grab a, an offensive lineman that is athletic and as talented as Evan Neal at three, the Jets, you know how we both feel about Kayvon Thibodeau. Um, I still think he's the best edge in this class. So the Jets get a much needed pass rusher uh, to that defense. You got the Giants again, making competent moves going with Charles Cross. I don't know, Cody, it feels a little high for Cross, but it seems like this is a good fit for the Giants needing some protection to help that run game. And then you talked about the Eagles trading up, not to take a quarterback, not to take a wide receiver, but to take, I believe, the best cornerback in this draft, Sauce Gardner out of Cincinnati. You got the Giants going back to the off, uh, back to the line, back to the trenches with Trayvon Walker, the edge out of Georgia. You got the Falcons taking the fast rising Jermaine Johnson, um, the edge uh, rusher out of Florida State. And then you've got Malik Willis here, nine to Seattle. So let's talk Malik Willis. Well, we're actually going to talk nine through 11 because you got Malik to Seattle. The Jets, we all know there's no secret that they want a wide receiver. And then you've got the Commanders. And I'm just going to tell you right now, this is my least favorite landing spot for a wide receiver, uh, one of them in Washington. And we'll talk about that in a second. But I definitely can see uh, them going with Drake London. I think they sent representatives to his pro day as well, Cody. So let's mm -hmm. talk Malik Willis to Seattle. What are you, what are your thoughts there? Why, why you don't you're not buying into the Drew Lock uh, the Drew Lock hype that they can build around Drew Lock? Let's go. No, and the problem is, is we see like exactly kind of like what Russ did. Russ is kind of like his own person. Uh, he can make a lot of plays by himself, uh, kind of you know just just doing stuff. And Malik is the best at that in this class, 100. percent And I just love the fit. I've loved the fit since day one. Like I said, the last mock I had Seattle trading up uh, because Brad Holmes from Detroit. He, he went. He was from. He's from the Rams organization, and 
they make they, they just make moves every single year and i just kind of felt that made sense but malik in seattle uh with a bummy offensive line with you know drew lock there like there's not really that much competition i think he goes in and i think what we've discussed before is that we think he needs another year but in seattle i think he's going to be forced into the fire within six weeks i just think it, it just makes too much sense if that makes sense Right, right. Garrett Wilson to the Jets. Uh, they've been. They were trying to get Tyreek Hill. Uh, we've seen rumors yeah. of London. We've seen rumors of, of Jamison Williams. Why Garrett Wilson? Just, just talk us through this process. And just my question to you: Is he your wide receiver one in the class? And is that why he's going to the Jets? Or do you just think he's the best fit with Zach Wilson and and Elijah Moore and Corey Davis and company? I think he's the best fit as far as like what they need. Like I, I think I prefer, and this is the problem I've had. I've had this problem for probably two months now is going back between Olave and Wilson as who my like number one NFL receiver, not fantasy, but NFL receiver. It's Olave right. and Wilson. And I think that the dynamic that Wilson brings is more of that superstar quality, uh, kind of like an Odell Beckham esque uh, type of deal. And I, I've compared the same situation to like Landry to Olave and Odell Beckham to, to uh, Garrett Wilson from like a, Odell Beckham had the superstar qualities. Jarvis Landry was just quiet, and he just got the work done. And I think that that's like more of an Elijah Moore. Elijah Moore is going to be that guy that's going to get the 100, 140 targets for New York. And I think they're bringing Garrett Wilson, and he can be the, the kind of stud superstar on the outside. Uh, a lot of the connections make sense. And if they're going to go receiver, I think it's Garrett Wilson out of these guys. And, and Jay Rich, you love Garrett Wilson too, and you also love uh, Elijah Moore. What do you think about this fit? with Moore and Wilson. Um, the more that this goes on, I do think, and I know Jay, you're advocating for them to take uh to take a uh, Jamison Williams, but if they go with Garrett, how do you feel about this landing spot for one of the top receivers in the class? I think it's really good. Um, I think to Cody's point, it brings a little bit of versatility versus having London there. I know that London's supremely talented, but I believe if I'm recalling correctly, that when it, the receivers were charted, it was actually Garrett Wilson who led all of college football, or at least among the draft eligible receivers in right. crossing routes, right? So that scheme versatility, I think does lend itself to to um, Garrett Wilson a little bit more than Drake London. Drake London would still be a great fit. You know, you have the speedster, smaller guy, shifty in the slot, and then you have big Drake London outside. I think just having Garrett Wilson, you can kind of mix and match them inside, outside and kind of play different types of route combinations and things like that. And that's why I kind of like Garrett Wilson more there. But Jameson Williams, you know, when you're going after Tyree Kill, that means you want speed, right? It, yes, Tyree right. Kill's a game breaker in his own right, but you want that speed. And I know, I think it was Adam Levitan actually put a bet down at 50 to one of Jamison Williams to go in the top five, which obviously he'd be going to the Jets at four. I don't think it's out of the question. You know, I've seen that bet already drop down to 25 to one, 20 to one. So I think there's a more and more of a chance, you know, JMO was started at, you know, around the twenties, fifteens, but now he's slowly creeping up and could be a guy who goes really close to that top 10, if not top 10. All right, a lot of people he's, liking the. Go ahead, Cody. Go ahead. Sorry, I was just gonna say he's just a really tough one for me because, like, we know what the talent is, we know what he can do, and and I and I'm not, I'm not of the side that says, well, he left Ohio State, he can't play, because I think that's complete BS. I think if he runs that four two four two five at the at the combine, I think you're 100 percent on with that. I think that there's no way they could pass on him honestly at four. I think the question and the doubt that possibly could be in their mind is what makes him push down, and that's why I still have him outside the top ten. That's just, I, and I, and quite frankly, I think there's a good chance he goes top ten. It's just a really tough one for you to pinpoint putting him somewhere um, right. in comparison to these other guys that have complete profiles and aren't like Wilson's not slow. So that's like that's my only problem. All right, Cody. Um, I'm I, listen, brother. I love you. You know this. I hate this landing spot, and I'm. I, but here's the thing. I'm terrified that this could be a reality. And uh, briefly, it's not just because they have Terry McLaurin, but I'm yeah. not a big fan of Carson Wentz. I think he's a one-year stopgap. So then you have to struggle through a year of Carson Wentz. And then I don't think they're bad enough. They will be bad enough to get one of the top quarterbacks in 2023, right? I don't think they're going to yeah. be in the C.J. Stroud, Bryce Young sweepstakes. So now – you're, you're crossing your fingers, your toes, and your eyes that they're in a position to get maybe a Will Levis, an Anthony Richardson, um, it, 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 which means it's a still a rookie quarterback. And, you know, that receiver is going to have to struggle through, you know, another year or two. I, I don't like it for I don't like it for London, but I'm the reason why I'm, I'm saying this is because I do think this, I mean, they had their whole staff 
to see him at his pro day. Or Rivera was there, was supposed to be there. Um, I, I don't like it for London, but I can definitely – uh, definitely see the commanders going wide receiver because they need one, man. They, I mean, with Logan Thomas, not all the way 100% um, post his knee injury, with Terry McLaurin saying that he's not going to take a snap until they get get his contract situation figured out. I mean, it's Curtis Samuel and DeAndre Carter or whomever they have. I mean, it's just they need somebody else in that division. Good Lord, please. And a lot of people in the comments are like, please don't let Drake London go to the Commanders. A lot of people loving the Malik Willis to Seattle pick. So let's scroll down a little bit. And, and Cody, we're going to talk about we're going to talk about London in a second. But I want to touch on this one, man. This is a nice little slot of two core, uh, two fantasy relevant players. Carolina trading down with Philadelphia and still getting a quarterback. Matt Corral coming off the board as QB2 in your mock. And then the New Orleans Saints. I mean, you, Jameson Williams to New Orleans. I, I love the fit with with um, with Jame, with Jameis Winston, with Mike Evans, with Alvin Kamara. But Matt Corral, QB two off of the board, not Kenny Pickett. Talk to me, baby. Yeah, uh, I I've said this many times as well. It's the same thing. It's this is a very tough one because there's not been a lot of kind of news on Corral because he didn't partake in some of the events through this whole process, other than his pro day. I had between Howell and Corral since probably November have been the two guys that this team has focused the most on. The picket news came during the Senior Bowl, and then that's quickly fizzled out. And honestly, I think it's Corral and and Howell as far as who Carolina likes the most. I had them trading down because I don't think they realize that, hey, nobody's going to kind of come get Corral is is my take on the research that I've done. They move down to 15. He falls to them. They still get him. Do I, and this is the same conversation everybody said, do we think any of these quarterbacks belong in round one? Hardly, hardly, right? And I think just having that's going to allow these guys to fall. You see Corral fall to 15, and then I have Pickett even down to like 30. And I just, I think Carolina understand. hopefully Carolina understands kind of the position, uh, like the, the lack of true top end, and hopefully they're not like, you know, this guy's so much better than Sam Darrell because I – the arm talent, I, I would say you would agree, is better than Sam Darnold's, but yes, it's not worth a top 10 pick. So that's that's kind of where I'm like, trade down, and if he falls to you, take your value. That's kind of where I stand with that. All right, J-Mo to the Saints. Jay Rich, you like this one, right? I, I know you've been advocating for uh, uh, one of these wide receivers to land in New Orleans. You like this fit, Jay Rich? Yeah, absolutely. You know, just bringing in another st- stud wide receiver to play with Michael Thomas, learn from Michael Thomas. Um, for people who don't watch Saint- Saints games, you can see the success they've had, even with just Deontay Harris, who's basically just a return man. But if you bring a bona fide <laughs> stud deep threat in there, you would have much more success with Jamison Williams. And so I think it's a great fit. I think whether it's Jamis or another quarterback in the future, they're going to find a way to develop him. Um, I think, Cody, to your point, it's how do these teams value that ACL injury? Because again, ACLs are becoming less and less of a thing over the long term and so we're going to see kind of how ultimately Jamison Williams is valued and I think that could change things for future guys as well but in New Orleans I absolutely love the fit and uh, Corral and Carolina trading down and still getting him would be really interesting in my opinion my girl Joe said I think Corral is key I've been saying it the whole time I mean I love the talent of Malik but Corral is I, I it's funny because throughout the entire college football season he was like QB1 Heisman favorite Then they go out there and get spanked by Alabama. Um, And then it was kind of, it really wasn't downhill for Corral, but the hype seemed to wear off because they just got annihilated um, by Alabama. I think he's the best combination of thrower runner in this class. I think Malik has the most upside. I think he's the best runner. I think he's got some of the best tools, but I guess ready to go. I have a tad bit more faith in Matt Corral than I do Malik Willis at this stage of the process. And that's not, it ain't a Malik knock because I got Malik right after him at, at QB2. Um, you know, uh, I'm with Cody. Overall, are these guys elite high end QB1s? I don't think so. Um, but in Superflex, that's what we play in, man. These, these, these positions are valuable. So. Uh, I'm, I'm with both of these spots, another landing spot, and I'm trying, I'm trying like hell to, to get into, and this one, this one is interesting because I saw some reports today that there are concerns about his work ethic and it, it's, it's again, smoke screen season, right? I uh, played overweight, this and that, but Traylon Burks, uh, to Philadelphia at 18, here's the reality. They need another wide receiver. They can't just, uh, they can't just roll out the slim reaper 
and expect Quez Watkins to just run deep every play. Quez, go deep. Devonta Smith, you do some other shit, and then we'll we'll make it work. They need somebody else. They need the three starting wide receivers for Philadelphia should 100% be Devontae Smith, a rookie, and Quez Watkins. Those should be three wide receiver sets with Dallas Goddard in at tight end. So Traylon to Philly, not Chris Olave, not Christian Watson, uh, not Jahan Dotson. You're going with Traylon Burks here to Philadelphia, Cody. Again, I, I think Chris Olave is kind of a redundant asset when you have Devonta yeah. Smith, right? Devo- they're kind of like that same mold, um, and, I, and I don't think having two – and, and don't take offenses because I know Devontae. Yeah, yeah, no, go, go, guy, man. Hey, this is your two, show, man. Two, <laughs> to two elf, like they're not alphas. You, you know, having two beta receivers on the outside and then having Quez, I think you need to bring in that guy like Traylon who can be your alpha, can be your big X. And I, I went off of this mock 2.0. I had Traylon going to Philadelphia and I've moved off since and now I'm back. Uh, I don't think he falls out of the top 24. Obviously, I think 24 sitting with Dallas. Uh, and then you said like the work ethic issues. Like I, th- I, th- I got to give a shout out to, to Fusu Vu this morning. He tweeted something about uh, the guy who who hunts boars with his bare hands uh, has work yeah. is- has work issues, but uh, the guy who avoids all testing doesn't. It's just kind of like smokescreen <laughs> season, one hundred percent. It's like this guy, even if he played at two forty, what, what was the clock? Twenty two and a half miles an hour, yeah. whatever he yeah. ran. Like, yep, get out of here. If he's still, ru- if you, if you, no. Not doing it, but anyway, yeah. Traylon Burks in Philadelphia. I think, I think the landing spot is very quietly good because, uh, like, the mesh that he brings compared to what Devonta Smith has, compared to what Quez has, Quez can still take the top of the defense. They're still going to respect him, and then you have Dallas Goddard, like Hurts running, like that makes that offense very, very potent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, and a lot of people like that spot. So it, ultimately, they need somebody else, man. They cannot roll out. You know, say what you want. Rager was getting too many snaps, man. I think he still had like a 60% snap share, you know, being a bust. So they've got to, three years in a row, it's unfortunate. But I do think that if they take Traylon, Traylon, Smith, Watkins, you can build around that receiving core. That's whether it's Jalen Hurts is the answer if they go another direction. I think that's a solid receiving core to build around. Cody, no Kenny Pickett to Pittsburgh. Derek Stingley, And I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to see. Cody, I have not looked at this mock, so this is a shock to me. No Kenny Pickett. We're going to continue to go down here, Jay Rich. And I see some Super Chat questions. We'll get to y'all in a little bit. But you got Derek Stingley to Pittsburgh. We'll revisit this. We got the Patriots going with Zion Johnson. And I've I've been saying this the whole time. I think Olave to Green Bay is probably, unless Garrett Wilson, which he won't fall to 22, I love the fit. He's a technical wide receiver. He's going to be where Aaron Rodgers needs him to be, where he wants him to be. I still don't think he starts the season off as the one in that offense, but if yeah. if I were to put money on it, by the time the end of the season rolls around, he could be he could develop into a more trusted wide receiver for Aaron Rodgers. And I think at least going into year two, Olave, if this were to be the, the case, would be the wide receiver one in, uh, in Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers. And if this happens, man... Cody, how high do you think Chris Olave can go in rookie drafts? It, let, let's just – sharp people know that Philly's a, a sneaky good landing spot. Smart people know that if 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 uh, Garrett Wilson lands in the Jets, he's going to get a ton of targets. But people are going to see this, right? They're going to see paired with Aaron Rodgers. How high would Chris Olave go in rookie drafts? I mean, you could make an argument for him to be – it depends really. I mean, we're, we're always running back based at the early part of it, but right. some, team, some some mock drafts I've seen people are taking receivers at one two, which is surprising Ooh. to me. But if you're doing that, if you're doing that, and if you're saying, all right, well, right now I'm taking Wilson, or right now I'm taking London, and then you see a Wilson land with the Jets, and you see a London land with Washington, and then like you said, Olave goes to Green Bay, and Olave is your receiver three. He all of a sudden becomes a top four pick, eh, like. That's just some realistic shit right there, right? Like, yeah, yeah. he's going to Green Bay. People are talking about, well, I can't go. You know, uh, the Green Bay guy is automatically going to jump. But yeah, but if it's Jahan Dotson, he's not going to be a top four pick. But if it's Chris Olave, yeah. a guy that's well respected and he's got talent, uh, not saying Jahan Dotson doesn't, but it's just going to ele- it just elevates him differently than it would a Jahan Dotson, I think. Oh, you got my Dallas Cowboys taking a linebacker. I don't hate it, but we need – Dallas just needs so much, man. Like, we need, like, four first-round picks. We need linebackers. We need offensive line. We need a receiver. I, I, I just pick your 
pick your poison. I would love this pick, though. I think we we are in need. This would free up Micah Parsons to let him just yep. be that kamikaze, rush the quarterback. Love Devin Lloyd. Uh, honestly, with Dallas, we could go one of eight directions. I could see Kenyon Green going there, Linderbaum. Uh, love Linderbaum going to Tampa Bay to help uh, Tom Brady in that run game. Uh, let's see. Kansas City. Here we go. Okay, 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 Cody. I like what you've done here. Let's talk through this. Kansas City gets Jahan Dotson in the fa- – Cody, this is brilliant. The Falcons, right? The Falcons traded down. Or did they trade up? They traded down in here. Or they traded up. Trade, trade up, yeah, trade they up. They trade up. And they take Kenny Pickett at 30. I like mm-hmm. this, Cody. I like Kenny Pickett. I like Kenny Pickett at 30 more than I like Kenny Pickett at 3 or 2 or 6 or 5 or 8. But this is nice. So let's talk Kansas City and Jahan Dotson, Kenny Pickett in Atlanta. Talk to me. Talk to us about these two picks. Jay, do you like – just real quick, Jay Rich, do you like these two spots that Cody – I have not – this was a surprise to me. I thought he was going to leave him out of the first. But Kenny Pickett to Atlanta, what do you think? Uh, to Atlanta, I, we'll see what the hell they do, man. I, I don't trust Atlanta at all. Um, that's just I'm the, t- reality, the value, right? like, the value of the pick, the value of where he went to get a the quarterback. Value, I mean, that a- the value is great because you get the yeah. you get the fifth year option, right? You trade up, get the fifth year yeah. option, which is what everyone should be doing with their quarterbacks. And then of course, Jahan Dotson to the Chiefs. I think it makes a lot of sense. I like the fit with Mahomes. I think he fits in the offense really well. But pick it in Atlanta. Ooh, I don't know, man. That's, I like that's tough. it, man. Cody, that's talk tough. to us. Talk to us. It's a little spicy. It's a little spicy. I get that. But I think it's something that can really happen because I think there's a floor, and I've talked about this before, uh, that, that kind of can fall out on Kenny Pickett when you get past Pittsburgh at 20, especially. Uh, if he doesn't go Carolina, which I don't think he does, then it becomes Pittsburgh. And if it's not Pittsburgh, then I think there's a real chance that he falls out of round one or to Detroit at 32. And I don't think Detroit's really looking to make that move. So then that opens the door for somebody to move up, assuming that they think Detroit's going to go quarterback. And he move up. You got Atlanta taking Kenny Pickett. Uh, they have Mar- Marcus Mariota, but you know I, I like I like I like Marcus Mariota. But they need to be building for the future. They get Jermaine Johnson top ten. They get Kenny Pickett here. There's plenty of receivers in this draft class to grab a receiver in round three, round five, etc. Uh, you get your safety next round, and then and then kind of you're just building off. Yes, you have to give up pick forty three and like eighty or something. So you're really moving up thirteen picks to get rid of a pick in like the round three. So. I think if they believe in Kenny Pickett that this is the move and there's been whispers of them liking Kenny Pickett at nine, so why not yeah. or at eight, so why not do it here at, at thirty if he drops as far? I like it, man. To get him at thirty, um and and I think what it's that value. means is it's value and they don't have to start him right away. You can let Mariota go out there. We're we're in this world of we want instant gratification. I think that if Pickett were to sit behind Mariota for even if it were half the season or, you know, pulled to Mahomes. Mahomes sat his entire rookie year until, I believe, the final game or the final two weeks of the yep. season. Let him sit and, and cook and learn. I, I really like that pick, man. I really like that value. All right, let's run through the second round real quick. Let's see who we got. Sam Howell to Detroit, Christian Watson to Houston, George Pickens to Chicago. Jay Rich, I'm not going to ask Cody, what do you think about these picks? Detroit with Sam Howell at 34. Uh, Christian Watson to Houston, and then Chicago taking George Pickens to pair with Justin Fields. It's uh, interesting to see how there, because, you know, that was something we saw a little bit earlier in the draft process and seeing how, but now he's kind of seems to be slipping down boards a little bit. I'm curious that, you know, Cody decided to put him there, but it makes sense. You know, if they pass on Malik, they're like probably going to be at least entertaining a quarterback in the second round. And I don't mind Sam Howell there. Again, getting the value play for a quarterback, three-year starter, mega producer, just lost all of his weapons this year and so underperformed a little bit, but definitely took care of it in the rushing department. Christian Watson to Houston, I love it because, again, there's wide open – opportunity right davis mills capable quarterback they're building around him and bringing in another receiver who can develop with him over the future the disrespect and to, to, to my the bears man nico collins just disrespectful keep going keep going jay rich <laughs> george pickens to the bears clear a rob replacement don't love it don't hate it who knows what the hell the bears are going to do i've talked about how i'm not optimistic about the bears but pickens there definitely elevates justin fields and there's definitely some some familiarity there right when they played at georgia together probably didn't play too much together but a little bit of familiarity is always nice going to the NFL. Cody getting a lot of love, liking the Pickens pick, liking how to Detroit. I like how to Detroit. But I'm going to give Cody the floor to talk about. We have been talking about this guy in the DMs for a minute. Let's talk Desmond Ritter to Indy. This is one connection that I continue to see a lot. 
Why do you like this spot? Do you, well, clearly you like the spot or shit. I, I don't know, Cody. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you think this is just what's going to happen? What do you think about Desmond Ritter to, to the Colts at, at 42? Part of doing these mocks is you'll learn in round one, you know, there's there's the guys that'll get maybe 15 of them right, but the average is probably about that six to six yep. to ten area of how many how many mocks you'll get right, how many actual positions you'll get right. Yep. When you get into round two and round three and round four, it's connecting dots, it's connecting visits, it's connecting body types and molds, it's connecting needs, and it's connecting just anything you can really get. And Desmond Ritter to Indianapolis fits a, a, an answer that, you know, the Sam Ellinger thing, Jacob Eason thing, Carson Wentz, it fits that body type, at the, being light, and he's got legs, and I think it answers a question where, all right, we got Matt Ryan, but we don't know how much Matt Ryan has left. We want to bring in somebody that is ready to play now in case Matt Ryan goes out there, you know, week one, week two, something happens. <laughs> Ritter, can, Ritter can play now, and we talked about this in the DMs like you said before. I, I, I hesitated back in February because I literally DM'd you for this purpose. I go, yep, something is telling me. Jimmy Garoppolo's arm with Jalen Hurts' legs, and you're like, whoa. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. And it's like I didn't see a 4-5 coming, and he comes yeah. and runs that 4-5, and I was like, holy shit, he might have Jalen Hurts' legs. Yeah. Um, but that the, pro the problem I've always had with him, and I think I told you, was the deep ball. When, he, when he's going downfield, it's like a Russell Wilson moon ball, but like pulled back 10 miles per hour. And it just scares me every time he puts the ball up. Uh, Alec Pierce was like the main guy he threw it to, obviously, in Cincinnati. And then across the middle, he struggles a little bit. But I think it would be a perfect situation for him to go to Indianapolis, learn a little bit from Matt Ryan. If anything happens, this guy is ready. 44 career wins, 10,000 passing yards. Like, he's a system quarterback, and he's going to be able to do the damn thing. So I, I really honestly loved this fit in Indianapolis. And I saw the, the rumors of it, so I was like, yep. bang, bang, bang. The, the yep. dots are connecting. There we go. All right, we got the Pittsburgh Steelers doing what Pittsburgh does so well, which is draft wide receivers, and they take Sky Moore at 52. Uh, Khalil Shakir, here we go. Second round for Shakir, the wide mm -hmm. receiver out of Boise State to the Arizona Cardinals. Jalen Petrie, I just love him. I know this is a, a fantasy kind of offensive player show, but, man, I, I, I really hope Dallas uh, gets Jalen Petrie some way, somehow. Whoa. Oh, Carpentier! Wait a minute. Let me make sure. Did, yeah. Did I? Did I? Did I? Mi hold on. Did I miss? You saw. You saw. No. It. You saw. No. It. You no. Saw no. It. No. I. May, I may have missed. Cody, let's no, refresh. No. Go call Matt Kelly. Uh, get the. Get the. Get the developers behind the scenes to update. <laughs> update this. Uh, your 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 mock is wrong. Something's wrong with the mock, because I see Isaiah Spiller coming off the board to Tampa Bay in round two. Yeah, yep. You like better it hope too. Mama Hall is not in the chat. You better well, hope. I'm where, just, you I'm better. Just you, you know. You better hope. You know. <laughs> now listen, Cody. Brees Hall's mom is a frequent resident of the show, and you do not have her son. Uh, um, but hold on. But Fred is Fred is our guy too. Fred, me and Fred are cool, and I ain't trying to piss off Footwork King, man. I don't want Cody. You got some explaining to do, good sir. So let's go. You got some explain. I don't comb your hair, do whatever the hell you got to do. You're, you seems like you're awake now. Seems like you're up. So what is? I, I don't oh, give a you, you putting, putting on, the on chain. putting Prepping on chains. Me. Okay, go ahead, Cody, because this is the people need. The chat is exploding. They, you are. Go ahead, Cody. Do I think it's the right move? No, but from all the things that it tells, Tampa Bay has brought in Brees Hall. Tampa Bay has brought in Isaiah Spiller. Uh, for, for 30 visits, uh, when you connect the dots, you have Leonard Fournette. He's your, he's your every down rusher. He's your Brees Hall type guy. You have Ke Keyshawn Vaughn, who was the guy that they wanted to fit into this scheme. Now, you just signed Leonard Fournette to a contract for, for what, three or four years. You bring right. Isaiah Spiller in. You bring Isaiah Spiller in in 2022. He quickly supplants Keyshawn Vaughn, and he becomes that number two, that pass catching back because he's a mm -hmm. great pass catcher. Fluid runner. He kind of molds in for a year. After next year, maybe they get rid of Leonard Fournette and Spiller becomes that guy. The problem is, is that it fits right in the scheme and the thought process of how Ronald, how Ronald Jones ended up in Tampa Bay. Not quite the athlete that people wanted to see. Not quite the running back everyone thought was going to be the first off the board. Also, Brees Hall. No disrespect to Brees Hall. i got to answer that one first because everyone's like, what about Brees? What about Kenneth Walker? It's not always about them. It's always kind of about the, the process and what the team's looking for and what the team thinks they need in a, in a running back. And if Tampa Bay is looking for a, a pass catcher, a guy that can do it on all three downs, like you've said before, 
Brees Hall, best comparable to Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor was a third running back off the board in his own draft class after Clyde, after Swift. True. So, like, th- these things happen. and People need to be aware and ready for this. I've yep. said this before. I, said, I just said it five minutes ago. Round two and round three is about connecting dots. It's not always about being, oh, well, you need to have Brees Hall first because Brees Hall is going to be first. It's not always about that because that's not how the draft goes. When you see certain things connect, Brees Hall has been a very tough one for this entire process to find yeah. a team for him. Everyone wants to point to Buffalo, but that's not always the perfect spot because Buffalo still has a couple running backs. They still really like Devin Singletary. I don't care what anybody says. Isaiah Spiller is the first easy fit that makes sense in a Tampa Bay even though they have Leonard Fournette, it still makes sense. And I'll just say this, and Jay Rich, you remember this. Last year, I had some people in the NFL draft circles that were pegging a running back to Tampa Bay last year, um, and the running back that a lot of people thought didn't didn't end up didn't end up getting drafted by him. Um, I mean, here's the thing: I, I like Isaiah Spiller. I, I still think Brees Hall is the best running back in this class, but it's yep. hard. It, it is. I, I've, I've challenged any and everybody. It, it is hard to look at his skill set at his size. He is a very, very capable pass catching back with requisite NFL size. Yes, the athleticism is slightly concerning, but we've seen these type of running backs get opportunity and thrive in the NFL. You know, the Arian Fosters, the David Montgomerys, these guys that aren't explosive elite athletes, and it limits their upside, right? Like you're not going to catch Isaiah Spiller ripping off 70-yard runs in the NFL. But I do believe that over the last three years, he was one of the, I think it's like him, Brees Hall, and somebody else, most 10-plus yard runs in college football. Like he's ripping off, those in most NFL runs are, I believe, four to seven yards, like, it, or it may be even a little lower than that. So uh, while, while I agree with Cody um, that he's not the running back one in this class, it, they need somebody else, man. And, and you're right, he would quickly supplant – uh, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn is the two in that offense and be a capable pass catching back for Tampa Bay. Trey McBride to Green Bay at 59. So now let's get into round three where we will see the pure kind of uh, the, the better running backs, in my opinion, the better running back prospects come off of the board. And if this were to happen, I don't think this is bad at all. I mean, they, they're, it's literally they're separated by less than 10 picks. But we got Jalen Tolbert to Detroit, Brees Hall to Houston, still a top 70 pick, and Kenneth Walker to the Jets, top of the third, top 70 pick. If this were to happen, honestly, if this were if this were to happen, Brees Hall would still be the 101. He would still be my RB1. Kenneth Walker... I'd be this one is interesting, right? Because Michael Carter is such a good pass catching back. I, I think he would be what he was at Michigan State, like a like a like a just a first one two down grinder that everyone thinks that he can get the work, but he only had what nineteen pass catches in his entire collegiate career. So you're just doing a lot of guessing with that one. And everyone's like, well, he can do it. Well, why did they never use him? Well. They did throw the ball to a running back at Michigan State. It was Hayward, Connor Hayward, right? A fullback, H-back, tight end kind of guy. Um, Brees Hall to Houston, uh, RIP Marlon Mack and Rex Burkhead and whoever the hell else they have there. Kenneth Walker to the Jets is a little more uh, – what do you think, Cody? Kenneth Walker goes to the Jets. What does that do for Michael Carter? I know you're a big Michael Carter fan. Is it a committee or is Kenneth Walker the guy, and has New York been telling us something by trying to sign James Conner, you know, looking at Kenneth Walker? Are they telling us something that maybe they don't see him as the predominant ball carrier in that offense? I don't think they ever did. Um, I think they love him. Obviously, I, I asked Joe Douglas this, and he called him young MC. And they love him, but that doesn't mean they're not going to bring somebody else in. They've went through Ty Johnson, Tevin Coleman, LaMichael P. Ryan. Uh, I can't even remember the other guy that they activated like in week nine, whatever. But you get what I'm saying? Like they need somebody that can work with Michael Carter, like Zeke and Pollard, right? Why not Kenneth Walker and Michael Carter? Like Michael Carter, and it's kind of funny what this has become become because last year I love Michael Carter so damn much. I said he was better than Clyde edwards Hilaire before the draft. All these things. People were like, what the hell are you talking about? I was like, the process was always 2021. It was never like a dynasty process to have Michael Carter. It was always a 2021 thing just because I saw it was right. going to happen year one. Because of this exact situation, I was like, there's always there's still a chance that they take a running back. And here it is, Kenneth Walker. They get him up with their fifth pick in this draft. It's kind of not 
it's not really a you know leisure pick where you know oh we can make it because we have so many picks, but right. kind of is right. They they have the receivers now. They're going to have Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson, Elijah Moore. They brought in a couple tight ends, bolster up the offensive line. Like you're going to have a comp- damn near complete offense with the New York Jets right now. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, I like it. I, I and everyone's talking about they don't like. Uh, <laughs> Brees to Houston, yeah. why? Like who, who? 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 I love it. Like I, I it's a young quarterback. I, I do think with Pep Hamilton and Lovey Smith, they're going to want to establish the run in that situation in the AFC South. Um, going up against Jacksonville twice a year, Indy twice a year, and Tennessee's a tough defense. But I would absolutely love Brees Hall in Houston, and I think he would be maybe not right away. Because they'll still use Rex Burkhead in passing down situations. They still got David, the corpse of David Johnson there. But I think going into year two, this would be a great fit, especially if Davis Mills continues to improve and ascend. I actually really like the Houston Texans fit um, a lot for running backs. We got David Bell. Go ahead, Cody. I was just going to say, and you're talking about Evan Neal, Laramie Tunsil. The offensive line's coming together, period. People must have forgot you had had him taking Evan Neal early. So I I like it a lot. Uh, (laughs) Indy goes with David Bell. Atlanta goes with Jay Rich's favorite player in college football, John Mechie. Find you somebody that loves John Mechie as much as Jay Rich. Uh, Justin Ross to Cleveland. Antoine slash Alec Pierce to the Giants. We also have James Cook to New England. Makes too much sense. What a Jerome, pick. Oh what a God. pick. You, you, you love it, don't you, Jay Rich? You just love, you love those satellite backs. Jerome Ford to Arizona. There goes my, you know, Benjamin shares Jeremy Ruckert to Dallas. I love it for the Dallas Cowboys. Zamir White to Buffalo. Everybody wants to pin Brees Hall to Buffalo or late first, early, you know, in the second. Like, you don't the, the, uh, Buffalo, I don't think they're going to do it, man. We want that to happen, but all indications are because remember they had uh, signed J.D. McKissick to, to, to compliment Devin Singletary. I think Zamir White to Buffalo would be a great fit for for Buffalo for what they want to do. Would take he's a, an upgrade from Zach Moss, so I love that for Zamir White. Vellis Jones to Kansas City. All right, Vellis Jones to Kansas City. Jelani Woods, everybody's favorite sleeper tight end. Jelani Woods uh, to Cincinnati, who in my opinion tests far better than he actually plays. He just when I look at him, he doesn't move. He doesn't play like he's as fast as he timed. But I do think Cincinnati needs an upgrade at tight end after losing uh, C.J. Uzama to the Jets. Calvin Austin, the Saints just get more weapons for Jameis Winston to throw the ball to. Greg Dolchich out of uh, out of UCLA goes to Cleveland. Damian Pierce to Florida from Florida to Philadelphia. Isaiah Likely to Kansas City. And there is uh, rounds one through three, rounds four through seven, coming from Cody very, very soon. He said, uh, what, Tuesday, Wednesday, Cody? Is that that's when rounds four through seven are coming out? Four or five will be tonight. Six and seven okay. will be tomorrow night. All right. So real quick, uh, anybody you want to touch on from this last kind of subset that we talked about? Zamir to Buffalo, Cook to New England. Uh, the Giants taking Alec Pierce. Where do you want to go? W- w- what's a player that you want to highlight and why you feel this is a good fit? The Zamir one you covered already, but I just want to say basically you remember what Zamir was as a, as a high school recruit. Now he's looked at as a poor man's version of Brees Hall, uh, Kenneth Walker. It only makes too much sense for Buffalo to do this, have him drop all the way here, 89, and they're like, hey, you know what? Third-round running back. Zach Moss, Devin Singletary, Zamir White, throw him in there. He'll do the damn thing. Jeremy Rucker to Dallas I think makes way too much sense. I really yep. love that fit. Jer- Jerome Ford's another one right there um, that honestly fitting right in that Chase Edmonds role. I-, I fell in love with that one. James Cook, like you said. But I wanted to get your guys' take on two guys. Alec Pierce to the Giants, kind of in that Galladay spot, and then mm-hmm. John Mechie to, At- to Atlanta. Uh, like you said, Jay Rich, you like John Mechie. What do you think about John Mechie in Atlanta? With a pick at Mariota, Pitts, not a lot of receivers there. What do you think about Mechie and does how far does he climb up? Because right now he's not looked at as a top ten guy in fantasy at, yep. at the receiver I don't, position. 
I don't think he would clown up that much, to be honest. I think there's just a lot of stink on him. I think they'll think, well, what if Ridley comes back and there's pits there and there's still the ACL injury concerns, right? But the thing I'm, that's encouraging for me about John Mechie is like, in fantasy, no one really wants him because of the injury. But in the draft process, people seem to not be as worried about that. You know, in the past, if you were a John Mechie or a lesser receiver, you'd be going in the fifth or sixth round. But the fact that he gets mocked in the second and third makes me think, okay, so if they believe in him enough to take him in the second and third, why am I not believing in him to take him in the second or third of drafts? Now, to exactly. your point, you had Pickett going here, and Pickett's not necessarily a deep ball guy, but I think that's conducive to what Mechie does well. He's really good in the short area game. He's good in running crossing routes. We saw what he did for Bryce Young this season and what he did for Mac Jones in the past. So I think it's a great fit, like, you know, quarterback and receiver. And then on top of that, depending on what happens with Ridley, I'm assuming being an Alabama boy, Ridley would groom him, right? And actually, you know, help him develop overall. And so I do like the fit, whether Ridley's there or not. I think having another Alabama receiver there, you know, passing the torch, sort of, sort of say, is a great fit in Atlanta. I think it's a place that Mechie can really thrive overall. Talk to me about Alec Pierce in the in New York. I guess I, I don't I don't hate the fit, Cody. I don't I just don't know what I, I guess I just don't know what the Giants are, right? Are they going to be a running team with Barkley? Um it, I continue to say it can't get any worse for Kenny Galladay, can it? Like it just it can't. They've got Kadarius Tony. Where does Alec Pierce fit in? Is would he essentially he replaced Slayton I think I think that's what I thought of right away right a guy okay. who runs a lot of deep routes a guy who can take the top off the defense Galladay is supposed to be that but he hasn't really in the past you look at the way Slayton has fit in that offense over the past four years I think Pierce would be an upgrade to that spot and um, depending on how Daniel Jones develops in the offense I think it's a great fit um, but I think Ray to your point about who does he kind of fit in and who does he replace potentially I think that's the guy that he would be replacing overall because I believe Slayton is on an expiring contract this year so you fit Alec Pierce yep. in there a big speedy threat on the outside that can play down the field. I think it's a great fit whether Galladay works out or not. Gabriel Davis was a fourth round pick in Buffalo. Kind of a similar athlete, kind of a similar player. Charlie Kohler. Dawson Knox was a third round pick for Buffalo. What do we know about Buffalo? Joe Schoen came down from Buffalo. They've talked to these guys. These guys mold after Charlie Kohler with that athleticism molds after Dawson Knox. Alec Pierce molds after a Gabe Davis. Mm -hmm. They need guys like this. They've had problems with Kenny Galladay staying on the field. Darius Slade staying on the field. You're running out Colin Johnson and Travis Toivonen. You, you, no. You bring in somebody. <laughs> Alec Pierce is a guy that can start from day one. He's going he's gonna to get usage right. He's not going to be Randy Moss, but he's going to be able to go out there and, and do the records at work uh, to get starting snaps, and they need a receiver. They just really just need receiver help at this point, uh, depending on Kenny Galladay year in and year out. It's failing them. Charlie Kohler coming at tight end. Uh, they've got Ricky Seals Jones as well, but Charlie Kohler brings that that athleticism uh, thing from uh, Iowa State. I mean, yep. He, we talked about this on the future cast last week, man. We had I, I didn't have a damn clue that this was what he was going to have, but he literally looks like a spitting image of Dawson Knox. Uh, Jay Rich and I, we were thank goodness they he didn't run at the combine because we had prop bets in that he was going over four eight. You know, we were like, there's no way yeah. this dude is going to crack sub four eight, and then he runs what a damn four five four six in the forty yard dash. Like I did not expect to see that come in from Charlie Kohler. So uh, somebody that big with that type of size. I mean, could grieve four four six two four six seven seventy ninth percentile uh, forty yard dash score eighty eighth percentile speed score seventy fifth percentile. Bur I mean, the the metrics look fantastic for Charlie Kohler. That's the big thing is like you click so we have a side button you can click next to workout metrics it'll go to the high school metrics uh, and four six two at his pro day click that side button four eight nine coming out of high school. Yeah, ridiculous. Like that difference right there. I can't even put words to that. That doesn't make sense, but he did it. So that's all that really matters is he's a, he's a four, six, seven, he's an 88th percentile speed score athlete, a tight end position. Uh, and that molds into what is, I mean, I get Ricky Seals Jones. You know, I've always been a fan of Ricky Seals Jones <laughs> as, a, as just a, like a player, but like, let's be real. Let's be real. If they really want to maximize kind of what Daniel Jones is, they need to bring in some weapons. And I think Pierce and Cole are, are low key, solid weapons that can help an offense. They don't think they're going to change a lot, but they just need guys at this point. And I agree with Cole. Great mock, Cody. Y'all give my boy a follow one more time. Cody Carpentier, 
at Carpentier NFL on Twitter. Make sure you follow him. The link to his mock is in the description. Cody, thank you for uh, for joining us today, uh, my man, to go through this. You are our first guest. Um, we appreciate the support on the show. We love everything that you do. And my only request to you is to tell your partner on the future cast to calm down with the hot, ridiculous takes. It is, get, it is getting wild from Andy. I saw one from him last night. I said, Cody, I got to talk to you about your boy Andy. You got to... You gotta wind. Sometimes you gotta wind them back. That as as a host of a show, Cody, it is our duty. Sometimes Jay Rich gets off on a wild tangent, and you gotta reel his ass back in. You gotta reel him back in. Go get Andy, reel him back in. But thank you for the mock. We appreciate it, Jay Rich. Anything you want to say to the people before we get out, or before we get to the super chats? We gotta get to the super chat. People paid us some money. Here we go. Here we go. Shane Joe. In rookie super flex drafts, how high would you take Corral if he lands in Carolina, Cody? How high would you take him? If he goes to Carolina, 15th, top 15 pick in Carolina, super flex, where would you take him? He's a first round pick. Uh and and maybe for you guys that's that's not like a take or anything, but for us he's he's a second round pick right now. He's like the 201, 203 kind of a spot. And I think if he goes round 1 to Carolina at 15 overall, uh he jumps over Ritter, he jumps probably ahead of Pickens if Pickens goes to to Chicago, Rashad White, I think he becomes like a 78 78 spot for me uh in Superflex. Yep, I'm with you on that one. Uh Jay Rich, here we go right here. 12 team Superflex PPR, would you trade 107 for Antonio Gibson? What side would you like Jay Rich, 107 or Antonio Gibson? I think I would take Gibson in that in that yeah. circumstance. I think you get more. Cody, where are you at? 107 or Gibson? Super Give me flex. Gibson. Give yeah. me Gibson. Yeah, I think that's, yeah, yeah, Antonio Gibson, 100%. How many fantasy, oh, this is a good one from uh, Rico, Rico Stone. How many fantasy relevant vets will be traded on draft weekend? We're hearing Baker Mayfield, maybe DK Metcalf. Um, how many fantasy relevant vets do you think, Cody, because this could put a wrinkle in the mock, right? Do you think that the Panthers are seriously interested in Baker Mayfield and bringing him in? Do you think that's a real possibility? Seahawks are the one 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 place I'm looking at. Um, uh, if not, like I've said this for a while now too, I think that Cleveland needs what he honestly needs. I saw the interview or whatever. I think what he needs, he needs to go somewhere where he's like in the Trubisky situation. Like he needs to go behind Mahomes again. Texas Tech. He needs to go like behind Allen. He needs to go somewhere like that. Like they need to ship him out of there. But I think he gets moved. I think uh, Jimmy's a possibility, but I don't think so because of his injuries. I think you're going to get at least one receiver, and then you might get another. So I'd put the number at probably a two and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Baker. Do you think DK goes? Bonus question. Do you think Seattle's going to trade DK? I hope not. I hope not. Because uh, I think Malik and DK would be awesome. But. Uh, that's being biased, but no, I, I, I don't, I don't think they can do it. I don't think they can. Okay. I think one All of those right. receivers, though. I think, I think Debo, Debo might be the, might be the best chance of, of a receiver D- getting traded out of the. D- yeah. You think, you think that's a real? You think San Francisco, money, money. I don't think San Francisco oh, wants to wants to, wants to give him. I, I don't think San Francisco wants. They won't to give have him the 30. money. Yeah, they, they don't want to give him 30. I don't think they can give him 30. And he understands what he's worth in that offense and to that team. And the rumor has the rumor that I got was that he gave them two numbers, three years and four years, and he turned his phone off. He said, see you later. Uh, and he's kind of just leaving it on the table for them. So I'm, I'm going to assume Nate, is, uh, Nate List is in the building, and I'm going to assume he doesn't want to hear any nonsense about DK Metcalf getting – Nate – I ain't finna piss you off. We're supposed to be talking on Friday anyway. Uh, Nate List in the building, representing for his Roto Underworld brother, Cody. Cody, one more time, brother. We appreciate you coming on, uh, sharing this mock with us. I know you just dropped it. So please, please, please click the link in the description. Check out the – go go back through this one because we didn't talk about offensive line. We didn't talk about the defensive players. You know, hit Cody up. Talk to him. Engage with him on Twitter. Tell him what you like. Tell him what you didn't like. Uh, we're all trying to refine our process and do better. Cody, one more time. Thank you for being here, brother. Thank everybody in the chat for tapping in with this this Monday. Uh, Jay, anything else before we get out of here? Nah, man, we're good. We're good. All right. All right. Well, we'll be back tomorrow. What are we doing tomorrow, Jay Rich? I don't even know. What are we doing tomorrow? I, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Well, let us know what you want us to do tomorrow. And if we don't, oh, fi- if you don't give us Hit anything like good, button. we'll figure it out. Hit subscribe, the like button. Subscribe. Follow Cody. Yeah. T- follow Cody. It's, it's, 
there no, no, no. like the like the video and subscribe do that there it is there it is we love y'all man we out of this thing peace